Hey guys, welcome back to our study on characters of the Bible. Now we're nearing the end. We're, we're getting up to where I only got three or four left. But these ones, again, just like the last two with Peter, it's going to take more than one episode to, to get their whole story in. So again, today we're going to focus on a man named Paul, formerly known as Saul. If you remember a couple weeks ago when we were talking about Peter, we said Jesus gave him a new name. And the same is true with, with Saul. Now, now, Saul, again, was born Saul. That was his name. He, he was born in Tarsus around 1 to 5 A.D., somewhere in there. And, and it was in a province um, in the southeastern corner of modern-day Turkey. Now, he was of the Benjamite lineage, and, and he had a, an ancestry of the Hebrews. Now, his, his parents were Pharisees who, who sought to protect their children from the, the contamination from the Gentiles. They were Roman citizens, but viewed Jerusalem as a, a truly sacred and holy city. Now, a little bit about Saul's boyhood. At the age of 13, Saul, he was sent to Judea to learn from a rabbi, and his education would continue for five or six years. And it was during this time that he developed a, a question-and-answer style of teaching known in the, the, the ancient times as diatribe. And, and this method of articulation helped rabbis um, debate the, the finer points of Jewish law to either defend or prosecute those who broke the law. Now, Saul, Saul went on and, and became a lawyer. And, and all the signs pointed to his becoming a member of the Sanhedrin. And that was a, the, the Jewish Supreme Court of 71, 72 men who ruled over Jewish life and religion. Now, Saul was zealous for his faith. And this faith that he had did not allow for compromise. And it was this zeal that led Saul down a path of religious extremism. When we read in, in Acts chapter 5, we see Peter delivering uh, his defense to the his defense of the gospel and, and I guess of, of Jesus in front of the Sanhedrin. Now, Saul would have heard this from Peter. And at this, this same setting, the rabbi that Saul learned under was also there, and he delivered a message to calm the council and prevent them from stoning Peter. Now, Saul could have also been present at the, the trial of Stephen. In fact, he was there because we read that he held the garments of those who did the stoning. And after Stephen died, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And Saul became determined to eradicate Christians, ruthless in his pursuit as he believed he was acting in the name of God. Now, arguably, there is no one more frightening or, or more vicious than a religious terrorist, especially when he believes he is doing the will of the Lord. And in this case, it was killing innocent people. Now, this is exactly what Saul of Tarsus was, a religious terrorist. And again, in the book of Acts, it, it states, he became ravaging, he began ravaging the church, entering house after house, and dragging off men and women, and he put them in prison. Now you might be thinking, I thought Paul was a good guy. I mean, after all, he went out and proclaimed the gospel. And I'd have to say you are right, but that was a later point in his life. You see, the, the pivoting passage in Paul's story is in Acts chapter 9, which recounts Paul's meeting with Jesus Christ on the road from Jerusalem to Damascus. This journey was about 150 miles. 
Now Saul was angered by what he had seen and he, he was filled with murderous rage against the Christians. And before departing on his journey, he had asked the high priest for um, letters to the synagogues in Damascus asking for permission to bring any Christians back to Jerusalem and imprison them. Now on the road, Saul was caught in a bright light from heaven that, that caused him to fall face down on the ground. And, and he heard the words, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul replied, who are you, Lord? And Jesus directly and clearly stated, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Kind of gives you goosebumps, don't it? But from, from that moment on, Saul's life was turned upside down. The, the light of the Lord blinded him. And as he traveled on, he had to rely on his companions. And as instructed by Jesus, Saul continued to Damascus to to make contact with a man named Ananias, who was hesitant at first to meet up with Saul because he knew Saul's reputation as, as an evil man. But the Lord told Ananias that Saul was a chosen instrument to carry his name before the Gentiles, the kings, and the children of Israel, and would suffer for doing so. Now, Ananias followed the Lord's instructions, and, and he went and found Saul. And, and, and then he laid hands on Saul. In other words, he, he prayed with Saul. And, and he told him uh, of his vision of Jesus Christ. And, and through prayer, Saul received the Holy Spirit. He regained his sight, and he was baptized. He was immersed. Saul immediately went into the synagogues and proclaimed Jesus as the Son of God. The, the, the people were amazed and skeptical as Saul's reputation was well known. The, the Jews had thought that he had, he had come to take away the Christians, but he had in fact joined them. And his boldness increased as the Jews that were living in Damascus were confounded by Saul's arguments proving that Jesus was the Christ. Now, we're just getting started in, into the good parts of, of Paul's story. And with that being his, his life in Christ and, and the time he spent with Christ, but we're out of town for, time for this week. So tune in next week as we continue on looking at the rest of the life of this man named Paul. So until then, remember... God made you, God loves you, and God wants to be your friend. See you guys next week.